Well, hello friends. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Take 5. We're in the series, The Cheerful Giver, and this week we're breaking down the message I preached Sunday that was entitled, The Spirit of Mammon. And what we're trying to understand is just exactly what that is and how to recognize it in our life. Now, without a doubt, I hope you caught Monday and Tuesday. If you didn't, maybe you need to go back and pick it up or, or ask for the notes or something. Um, you, we need to understand that this spirit of mammon and money, it's not the same. Don't, don't confuse that. Jesus, when, when he said you can't worship God and mammon, he wasn't just talking about the existence of money. He was talking about the worship of it, the love of it, you know, where we put our priorities and our initiative and our motive. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about the spirit that can rest on money, uh, can be a, an unrighteous idol, a God, as it were, that we serve. But we, we know that money can be used for righteous or unrighteous purposes. It can be used for eternal or temporary things. So we know that, that mammon and money are not the same thing. Mammon is the spirit behind it. Mammon is what causes so many people to have frustrations and fear and anger, anxiety, uh, you know, ego and, and so many other things, covetousness, all of these things uh, are, are, are what the, is the spirit that is on money that we call mammon. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to determine. Now, uh, for the next uh, couple of days, I want us to try to see some things that will help us identify this spirit of mammon so that we'll recognize it when it begins to work in our life. Because if you recognize something, then you can begin to deal with it and you can get it out so that your heart can be right when it comes to the concept of money and how God intends for us to use it. So we're going to look at four things for the next couple of days that'll help us recognize that. The first one is an unhealthy desire to be rich. Make sure you hear that completely, okay? An unhealthy desire to be rich. I want you to know that there is a difference between a healthy and an unhealthy desire to be rich. There's nothing wrong with a desire to be rich as long as it's healthy, as long as your priorities are in order God doesn't mind if you have the desire to be rich or to own possessions and things. God doesn't care about that. He's not interested in that one bit as long as we have things in order in our life and our heart is right and we're generous like the Bible tells us to be generous and we're obedient to that. God doesn't care about that, that idea. A healthy desire to be rich can be recognized in the life of a person whose priorities are in order. They want to be rich so they can be generous and helpful in the kingdom of God above and beyond what is required in the scriptures. And they want a better life for themselves and for their family, spiritually, physically, socially, and materially. And this person, that desire to be rich, that's pleasing to God. That is absolutely okay. God doesn't mind that. A lot of us, uh, you know, we're raised, if, if you've been in church all your life like I have, so that's been 50 years, we remember the day when people did not equate, you know, Christianity with, with wealth. If, if you were a true Christian, you had to be broke, busted, and disgusted all the time, and uh, you couldn't have anything, you couldn't own anything because that was worldly, and, and that was such a ridiculous thought because we abused it. Now, on the other hand, we flipped the script and we've got out of one ditch, crossed the road, and now we're wrecking in the ditch on the other side with some of the mindsets that people have today, thinking that God just wants everybody filthy rich, and that's not true either. There's got to be a balance in there. There's got to be a balance, but we need to know that there is a healthy desire to be rich, and it is okay. As a matter of fact, the Bible gives us some instructions. Paul told Timothy, give this command to those who are rich with the things of this world, Tell them not to be proud. Tell them to hope in God and not in their money because money cannot be trusted, but God takes care of us richly and he gives us everything to enjoy. Tell those who are rich to do good and to be rich in good works and tell them they should be happy to give and ready to share. 
By doing this, they will be saving up treasure for themselves, and that treasure will be a strong foundation on which their future life will be built. They'll be able to have the life that is true life, and that is eternal life. No place in there did he tell them that they could not have their wealth or possessions. He said, just make sure you keep things prioritized spiritually. Make sure you things keep things in order. Make sure you trust God and not money. Notice on our money, it says in God we trust. And so that's so that we remember that, that God is the source of everything. Money is how we transact business, but it is God that we trust to give us everything and to meet our needs. And that is a healthy desire to be rich and that is okay. The Bible justifies that. Now, on the other hand, that unhealthy desire to be rich, that will lead to destruction. We just read how a healthy desire to be rich can lead to eternal life. But on the other hand, that unhealthy desire will lead to destruction. First Timothy 6, 9, Paul again says, people that want to be rich bring temptations to themselves. They're caught in a trap. They begin to want many foolish things that will hurt them. These things ruin and destroy people. The Living Bible says it this way, people who long to be rich soon begin to do all kinds of wrong things to get money, things that hurt them and make them evil-minded and finally send them to hell itself. So, so that is a desire to be rich that has to be brought under control. It has to be maintained. It has to have a lid on it that was put on it by the word of God and by right priorities. So, so when that desire is not brought under subjection, it will lead to many temptations that can lead you away from God and totally ruin your life. And that is an unhealthy desire to be rich. That unhealthy desire says, I want money. I want things. I want possessions. And it's not just rich people that are that way. You'll find a lot of people, um, poor people, uh, people that are the have nots in society. You'll find a lot of them, probably more of them are that way than the wealthy constantly wanting and trying to desire and trying to get and trying to possess these things. And then it's just a constant stir of emotions in their life. And they end up worshiping mammon instead of worshiping God. So if you see that uh, unhealthy desire to be rich, if you see that rising up in your life, you're on the way to being a mammon worshiper instead of a God worshiper. And that's something that you need to bring under subjection. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.